Hi, welcome back to VPN part one. So what we're going to do now, folks, is we've just left off from the overview. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually try and test connectivity before we set up the VPN itself. So let's just go into PCA. And what we can do is let's go into the command prompt and let's do a quick ping. So we'll ping our friend over here in PCC over in site three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ping 192.168.30.3 just to ensure that we do indeed have connectivity. Um, our first one may fail, um, but we should hopefully, and you can see we're getting replies for the rest. Um, the first one failed due to our probably resolution there. So now that we have uh, all of our pings coming back, fantastic. What I'm going to do now, folks, is I'm just going to do a trace route. So I'm going to go trace or T. Um, again, we're on a Windows-based machine here. And I'm going to type in that IP address of 192.168.30.3. And what this should do is it should trace the route across the network. So as we can see, if I just move that over a little bit, it makes it easier to view. But we can see that the first top from this computer here was the interface on router one. So that the interface of this gigabit 00 port, that would be 192.168.10.1. The next top in, the, in this case would be basically routers two interface. And this is on, as we can see, the 10.10.10. .10 .10 dot and this interface here is dot one so this is the next hop along here then we get to the third hop which will be 10.20.20.2 as we can see here and then the final hop will be pcc which is 192.168.30.3 so that shows that we're essentially going through four hops so what i'm saying here is take a print screen of that and we'll come back to that later so when we see the final vpn set up we'll notice something very different but for now, take a print screen and we'll come back to that. So now that we're going to, now that we can see that we've got connectivity across these various different sites and how the actual packets go across these sites, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to basically step two. And it basically says there, before we can set up a VPN, we need to ensure that the router's VPN peers have the appropriate security technology package installed. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you this. So if I just go into router one for a moment, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say enable to move to privilege mode. I'm gonna now say show version. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna show me all of the various details about what's configured or packages installed on this router. And I wanna just display one important point here. You'll notice here that there's a technology package called security. And in this case, you can see it's disabled. So what we're gonna to want to do is, we're gonna to want to enable this security package. And in order to do that, we'll need to write in a command to enable this. And the command to do that is we're gonna to need to move into configure, uh, configure terminal uh, mode, and we're gonna to need to enable this license. So to enable this license, to use this feature, I'm gonna say license, and then I'm gonna say boot, enable, and I'm gonna say what type of router this is. In this case, it's a 1900 router. And then I'm gonna say technology, um, enable C1900 technology, um, tech, let's just see if that's working. Command not recognized, let's double check that I'm in the right settings here. Oh, hold on guys, I've spelled that wrong, haven't I? So license, oh, hold on, what's going on? Let's do a question mark here, guys. Let's see, why does it not um, license? I was correct, license. Let's have a question mark, do our constant boot. Let's try our next module. Okay, I had the, the command wrong there, didn't I? Did I have the, the module uh, word? I didn't have it uh, configured properly. And um, then I'm just gonna say technology package, and this is where the context sensitive help. So if you do not, you forget this command to enable something like this, this is where I use the question mark a lot to help me um, to kind of use um, the, the, the Cisco help to, to figure out the commands. So in this case, I'm gonna say security, and I think at the end of this is CR, which is basically carriage return. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press enter to that, and it's gonna ask, hey, you're looking to use a new software feature. Do you want to accept this uh, terms and conditions or this agreement? I'm gonna say yes to this, and then basically what it's then doing, it's basically saying, hey, this will it take effect 
after your next boot. So once I, um, what I'll need to do now is, I'll need to exit from here. I'm gonna copy my running config to the startup config, so my configuration changes. I'm gonna press enter to save my configuration to NVRAM, non-volatile RAM. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reload my router. And what this is going to do is it should enable this security technology package. And what this will do is it'll give me access to a lot of the security commands that I would not necessarily have access to if I didn't apply this. A way we can check this, guys, is if I go to after my router has now rebooted, what I can do is I can do that show version again. And what's happening, you might notice here, guys, is you'll see other prompts jumping up on my screen. What's happening here is that just because I've reloaded my router, what's happening is we're, we're creating a new adjacency with the router here. Um, in this case, router two. But what I want to do is I'm going to say show version again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down. And what you'll notice now, guys, is you can see that now the security package is enabled. And we've got this evaluation and this security package uh, enabled. What this allows me to do now is I'm going to be using some security commands a little bit later. So this will allow me to do so. So now that I've got that security technology package um, enabled, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move straight on to our next step, which is step three. So what I wanna do here is I wanna basically say, oh, when traffic is coming from my 192.168.10 network, and it's going to the 192.168.30 network, I want this router to treat this as special, what's known as interesting traffic. So because later on, what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna say, hey, when you see traffic going from site one to site three, I want you to encrypt or to scramble that data so that if someone is looking or if there's a man in the middle attack in between our two sites, they won't be able to see the clear text. It will, it will encrypt the traffic. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm gonna use that command. I'm gonna use a command to create an access control list. And this is called a crypto ACL, a crypto access control list to kind of designate what traffic you want to designate as basically the interesting traffic. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into my configuration mode and I'm gonna say access list. And like a, an extended access list that we, we've been used to doing in the past, with regards to uh, setting up access lists on a router, I can basically say access list 100, which designates this as a extended access list. I'm gonna then say permit. So basically I wanna say, hey, any traffic you see, I want you to permit this. I'm gonna say the IP, so again, IP traffic. And then what I'm gonna do is, and if I hit my question mark, it'll tell me now, guys, it's asking me, so what traffic do you want to permit with a source IP address? So what I'm gonna say is, I wanna permit the traffic from the 192.168.10 network. So I'm gonna say 10.0. And what I need to do now is, I need to apply my wildcard bits to this source network. And if you've done access control lists before, and I hope you're watching this and you're saying, yes, I remember these wildcard bits. What I will essentially do is, I will say, I'm gonna give this a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255. So what this is essentially saying now, guys, is it's saying, when I see, I'm, I'm creating an access control list here, and I'm permitting IP traffic from this source IP range, so 192.168.10.0, and what this wildcard mask is saying, I care about the first, exactly this first octet. So in other words, I care about that it's from the 192 range. The second zero is saying, I care about that it's from 168. The third zero is saying, I care about that it's from the 10 network. And this last 255 is saying, I don't care what IP address is, is in here. So again, this can go from one all the way up to 255. So again, what this is saying is, I want to treat this as special traffic, any traffic coming from this network. And then now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna create a destination access control list. So in other words, where is this IP traffic going to? So in our case, it's gonna be going to 192168, and this is the site three. So if I just move this over here, I can see it's 192.168.30.0. And then I'll use the same 
wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255. And what that's essentially now doing is it's saying set up an access control list, basically permit IP traffic going from this 192.168.10 network to the 192.168.30 network. And once I press enter, that's now confirmed. So we're now, we've actually done this step here, guys. We've, we've done, we've basically done step one. We've tested connectivity between A and C, okay, um, PC and PCC. We've basically set up a VPN to ensure the routers have the appropriate security technology package. So we've done that on R1. I've also done this on R3, guys. So again, what I'll do is I'll make this packet tracer file available to you. But again, I've actually already gone to the hassle of installing that security technology package on R3. So just doing it on R1 is enough. And then basically what I've done that now is I've basically created an uh, an interesting, I've identified the interesting traffic on R1. Okay guys, so that part is now done. So we've done parts one, two, and three. The next thing we're going to do guys is a, is a really important step. We're going to basically set up what's called our internet key exchange or Ike phase one tunnel. And we're gonna do that in our next video. I hope you'll come back and join me for that.